Are you feeling stuck in unhealthy habits, toxic relationships, or low self-esteem? Do you crave a healthy relationship filled with inspiration, love, acceptance, and fun? You are tuned into the right place. The Laura Richer Show starts now. Join me, dating coach Laura Richer, as we share tools for using your dating breakdown for a relationship breakthrough. You might just be on the verge of attracting your soulmate. Attract the relationship you truly want and deserve. Now, join us for the show. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the Laura Richer Show, broadcasting on Transformation Talk Radio. I am your host, dating and life coach, Laura Richer. I'm also the owner of Richer Healing Hypnosis, and I am here today with my co-host, Andy Lucas. Hi, Hello. Andy. Hello. How are you, Laura? I am fantastic. How are you? Outstanding. I'm very excited about today's episode. Me too. So Andy is also the owner of Hummingbird Marketing Services, yes. and we're going to be talking about that in a little bit. A little bit later. So for our listeners today, I want to know if you have a dream, but it never seems like the right time to go for it. Or maybe you question if following your passion is irresponsible or reckless. And if you've ever had any of those thoughts, you might want to tune in for today's show. We're going to be chatting with two very special guests, um, former clients of mine, Melissa Byron and Nikki Lucas. And these are two women who did just that. They decided to follow their passion and pursue careers and lifestyles that they love. Yes. So Andy. Yes. <laughs> before we talk with them, yes. I thought that we would chat for a few minutes because this is something both of us have done and yes. Hummingbird Marketing Services is was the creation of you following your dreams and passion. Exactly. And I, I do want to mention that today is tattoo removal day. So yes. there might be some times when going for it could be seen as regrettable. But right. Um I think what you and I have done and when we talk today with Melissa and Nikki, we will find that what all of us have done was not reckless and it was actually a great way to let go of our fears and do something that we really feel passionate about. All of us have done that, although they're all very, very different things. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So if there's a dream career or passion that you're ready to go for, this is some excellent advice today. If you're thinking about getting a face tattoo, you might want to really, really think it through. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I apologize. Um, yes. And I do want to say this, uh, Wayne Dyer, who we've talked about many times and we've quoted, um, he says something that I think is really powerful. Go for it. Now the future is promised to no one. Right. And this is a great way of saying the same thing, like live today, like it's your last day, all of that. So why not, why not do what you love? We spend more hours at work than we do anything else, even mm -hmm. sleeping. So why not? So, um, I can thank you, Laura, for creating Hummingbird Marketing Services. I know that sounds strange, but um, as everyone knows, I started as a client of Laura's and um, I was very fortunate to have her encourage me to follow what I felt passionate about. At the time, I was working at a sizable uh, online retailer here in uh, Sorry, here based in Seattle. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Oops. And um, it was not a fun experience. I learned a lot and that was fantastic. Um, but it was a very difficult work environment. Um, and it, I wasn't having an enjoyable experience. I was very stressed out, um, just had a lot of issues related to work. And so Laura... Um, encouraged me and said, you know, have you ever thought about starting your own company? I mean, you can do marketing and you can build websites and why don't you do that? Now, Laura, did you have any ulterior motives? So yeah, I <laughs> want to just clarify that I did not help. I didn't create Hummingbird Marketing Services, but I did wish it into being because I needed somebody to do marketing for my business. And I knew that these are skills that you have. <laughs> Yeah. And, the, and we had done a lot of work around the fact that you weren't happy in the workplace that you were yes. in and that you wanted to leave and you wanted to be able to do something that was more creative, less restrictive. Yeah. But it seemed kind of scary. Yeah. It was terrifying because I have come from a family where you get up, 
you work a nine to five job for somebody else. And that's kind of what you do. And you work really hard and then that's it. And there was never a thought of, could I do this on my own? Could I be my own business owner? Could I start my own thing? There was, that was never a thought in my mind. So then we started to talk about that and it started to become a thought in your mind. How did you know it was the right time for you to get started? Well, we had started working together. Uh, I was working with you for a couple of years and then um, as a client, and then I was kind of doing, I was building stuff on WordPress and everything. And I decided to leave that large online retailer and, um, I thought, well, maybe this is the time. And so I built the website for it. I got the business cards. I got the logo. I was all set. And then I completely panicked and thought, what am I doing? I can't do this. What, what, who, what am I thinking of? And so I got another job. Um, that job enabled me to work from home, which kind of gave me this taste of freedom that I had not had at the other more prison concept job that I'd had <laughs> before. Um, and so I, I appreciated just having my, I just had this freedom that I had never experienced before. And then after four months at that corporate job, they laid off their entire marketing department. And I thought, well, now's as good a time as any. So did I know it was the right time? I don't know. I feel like I just thought I cannot go back to another court. I cannot go back to sitting in a cubicle all day. That just wasn't for me. I mean, some people really enjoy that environment and they're around people and everything is, that's great. That just didn't, work for me. And so I thought, let's get a business license and let's, let's do this. And in this, by December, I had two clients already and I was kind of off and running. So I think that is such a common story. And I think sometimes we're waiting for it to be the perfect time and to have it all figured out and know that it's the right move to make. I don't know if that, that certainly didn't happen for me when I started my business. I feel like most of the people that I've worked with don't have that experience It more is born out of the fact that you go, I know really clearly, I don't want to keep doing what I was doing before. Yes. Is there something different to do? Yes, it yeah. was. And that was it. I know what I don't want to do. Mm-hmm. I know that I have the skill set and the love and the passion for this. I don't know if I can make a business out of it, but I'm going to give it a try. Yeah. And I really appreciated your encouragement during then, during that period, because you you grew up around entrepreneurs. You grew yes. up around people starting their own businesses. And you gave me some really good advice when I first started. You said, you're going to have breakdowns. You're going to, you might cry every day for the first year and question, <laughs> what am I doing? And you know, I did, I cried yeah. a lot like, oh my God, what am I doing? And yeah. how do I charge the, and how do I figure this out? And um, when I first started, it kind of had to be a, I'll take any client, I will figure anything out. I'll just do it. And it, it turned out really well, but I appreciated that advice so much. And I have told that to other people because I tend to work with clients who are just starting out as well. So I give them that same advice, like, Oh, good. You're going to have breakdowns and and it's perfectly natural and it's okay. And the more you're in business, the more, the less those breakdowns happen, the less you cry. Yeah. Unless it's weeping for joy. Yes. Yes. I don't think there's that many tears <laughs> shed anymore. But in the beginning, no. it's really hard because you don't know what you're doing. And we have this idea that everybody else knows what they're doing. Everyone else who started a business must have had a perfect business plan. Oh, and yeah. they knew exactly what they wanted to do since they were five and they're on their way. And I so far have never met anybody like that. No. I have never met anyone like that. They, No one really knows what's going to happen. And we are going to talk more about your business um, it, in the last half of the show and how you started your business. Cause it, that is also a fascinating story. It's just, no one goes in with this perfect idea of what it's going to be. It's, it is kind of a, it's a leap of faith. It's that phrase leap and the net will appear. You just yeah. have to kind of go for it. And the two clients that we're going to be talking to today had really great dreams of things that they wanted to do that don't sound like things that you can get to be 
get to do for a job. So Melissa, who we'll be talking to in the next segment, loved the idea of travel and making travel into a career, which I think a really logical, practical person would say, you know, no, travel's for vacation. You work the rest of the time. Uh Uh, But she has gone on to do that. And then Nikki, who we'll be talking to in the last segment or the third segment, she loves music and she loves rock bands. And she decided to transition into a career that would allow her to be involved in that. And that's Mm -hmm. not a normal transition that you think you're going to no. make in your 40s. However, no. it's absolutely possible. Yeah, exactly. And it it is interesting. I think we we learn about ourselves as as you go on and you get more confidence as mm-hmm. you go on. And I mean, I I can only imagine how you what your thoughts were, you know, 8 years ago, 8 9 years ago when you started to what your thoughts are now and the kind of advice you would give yourself. Um, you know, it it's we all grow and change as we're doing our businesses but it's yeah. really fun to explore our passions and turn something into a business that like you said you just didn't think you could yeah and you know i think it's important to say that it's gosh going on what eight nine or ten years now that i've been doing this i had no idea what i didn't know i mean there were so many things that yeah. i needed to learn really i think the most important piece is just getting started just yeah. start. You're not going to know everything. You ha- How could you? It's all the process that is and the learning that's going to happen along the way. So that's why when somebody's ready to make that change, you know, of course, you have to be practical and look at your finances and things like that. But there is going to be no perfect time. Yeah. You know, Chelsea Handler, who I, I admire and she's kind of done a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. She says, don't think about anything for too long. Even if it's off the wall, go for it. You'll have a lot more fun in life. Yes. And it's very true. I mean, why do we why do we spend so much time doing something we don't like? You know, that is a good question. I I think fear is the the main answer, even though I grew up around entrepreneurs. There was a long period where I couldn't really imagine that I could make my own paycheck. I just couldn't wrap my mind around the fact that somebody wouldn't issue me a check every two weeks and that that I could do that myself but for that was that was a block I had I was afraid and that was probably from like a a lack of confidence um but like with Chelsea saying if you think about something too long you're going to talk yourself out of it exactly it's very very easy to do that so so Laura we are going to take a quick break but before we do can you tell everyone how they can get in touch with you especially if they want to be inspired and encouraged and coached uh, like you've done with all of us that we're talking today. How can people oh, get in you. touch with you? Yes. So go to richerhealing.com and you can schedule your complimentary consultation and we can chat and see if my services can support you in whatever your big dream or vision is. Or you can just give us a call at 206-765-8265 and our scheduler can schedule a consultation with you. Fantastic. So when we come back to the Laura Richer Show, we are going to be talking with one of Laura's former clients, Melissa Byron, who let go of her fears of being alone and embraced her dreams of travel and seeing the world. And now she's encouraging other women to do the same. So stay tuned. Hi, welcome back to the Laura Richer Show, broadcasting on Transformation Talk Radio. I'm your host, dating and life coach, Laura Richer, and owner of Richer Healing Hypnosis. And I'm here with my co-host, Andy Lucas. Hello. Hey, Andy. Andy's the owner of Hummingbird Marketing Services. Yes. And I am so excited today to welcome a very special guest, a former client of mine, Melissa Byron. Melissa um, decided to go on an adventure after she completed a program with me in 2016. And she has always loved travel, but like so many of us, she felt restricted by limiting beliefs about what the possibilities were for her. Well, she decided to bust through those beliefs and go for it in 2017. And she's now living in Berlin, Germany, and has created a fantastic blog about travel for single women. And I am so thrilled to have her on the show to share her inspiring story. Hi, Melissa. Welcome. Thank you, Laura. It's great to be here. So glad to have you. So tell us a little bit about your history. When did you fall in love with travel and when did you decide you wanted to live abroad? Well, um, I really didn't travel until later in life, till I was almost 30, um, because like many people, I was sort of always waiting for somebody to go with me. Um, (laughs) So right around my 30th birthday, I decided to 
give it a chance. And I went to Italy for the first time. Um, hmm. And it was there that I decided that I've got to start doing more of this. So that's when it all started. And I guess that was 2010. Wow. And so what was your next step? Did you just start traveling all over at that point? At that point, you know, once a year I would save up and I would try to get away, whether that would be in the United States or if I could get over to Europe, um, mm. that would be the goal once a year. And I slowly built up to that, always thinking in the back of my mind, I'd love to live in Europe someday. And I just thought, well, that's, that's never going to happen. How, how could I do that? I don't have a job that could uh, transfer me over there. I don't know anybody. And I just thought that was never going to happen for me. And so, so that was one of the limiting beliefs, you know, you just thought it wasn't going to happen. You didn't know how you would get a job over there. Were there any other beliefs that were holding you back? Well, I certainly didn't think I could do it alone. Mm -hmm. uh, I certainly thought like I needed a partner to do this with, um, that, that would be one of the only ways for that to work out. And you worked with Laura, so you did one of her programs. Okay. And what? how did Laura help you kind of shift your belief system to say, hey, maybe I, I can do this. I don't need to wait for somebody or I don't, it's not impossible to live abroad. Well, I went to Laura because I was looking for somebody who, like a life coach where I could talk about, I, wanting a partner was like why I went, but really finding myself is what I found and this, the confidence um, that I was lacking in my life. And once, you know, pretty quickly into our sessions, I really started to feel sort of a change in like bringing myself, you know, back to myself and really mm, starting nice. to feel what I really wanted for me. And slowly, you know, these, these ideas seem like they could be a reality. And with the encouragement that I was getting in my program, um, I started to move forward with this. That's fantastic. How, so how long have you been living abroad? It'll be two years. Wow. Wow. I know. I really can't believe this. Yeah. Wow. And in that time, do you know how many places you've traveled? I have been to a lot. Um, if I'm going <laughs> to guess, it's maybe 25 different cities in two years. Oh, wow. All over Europe. All over Europe, yeah. And I did do wow. shoe in um, November. So that was my furthest um, place, like furthest into Asia. Wow. So when did you start your blog? And it's a single woman traveling. Yeah, a yeah. single woman traveling .com. Um, I started it in February. I really should have started it a long time ago. When mm -hmm. I first started traveling, it's hard to remember all the trips that you took and all the details you want to include in this. But I really started it um, at the beginning of the year. I just started feeling like I was having such success in personal happiness and what I was doing that I needed to share this for other people, because I work for women really, mm -hmm. or men, um, anyone that really wants to kind of bring in something different into their lives. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like being a single woman traveling has given you? confidence um that is definitely the main theme here mm -hmm. um i really feel like i've changed the way i look at everything and the way that i would even approach friendships or relationships because i'm really strong in myself and who i am now mm -hmm. and i've gotten a lot of that from being you know out there traveling on my own <laughs> have you I, I think there is kind of a stigma about women traveling alone. So how do you kind of combat that in your writing? Because I think you are encouraging other women to feel confident traveling alone too. So can you share any advice, I guess, and thoughts yeah. on that? I definitely go into a lot of detail on, on the blog um, about like the barriers that you might have and how to break through them as far as the, the five reasons why you should do this. I think my number one was feeling like other people were going to see me in a restaurant by myself and think I was a loser with no friends. Mm. Oh God! And I was so self-conscious about this, you know, it was silly, but I know a lot of women, you know, my age kind of share that fear of like, Oh, I'll be by myself at dinner. What am I going to do? Um, there's so many little activities you can do to keep yourself busy through 
through dinner and just remember like no one's thinking about you sitting there by themselves like they are thinking <laughs> about their own lives they're doing their own thing and you can really like just enjoy you know being in this new place and and just really yeah really enjoy it yeah that's something that laura you have that's a common theme that you talk about is that and what you're saying melissa is worrying what other people think it has nothing to do with them. It's how you feel and who cares what other people think of what you're doing there. And like you said, they're probably not even noticing you. They probably don't even know, or they wish they were you. Maybe they don't even want to be with who they're sitting there with. Exactly. <laughs> and that's a funny little trick that our mind plays is when we have a fear, we start to think that other people are noticing that about us, that they're looking at us thinking we're losers. Well, the truth of that is if that's a thought coming up, then you feel like a loser. And so that's the work is to resolve that within yourself. Because no one, I mean, the truth is no one really cares that much what we're doing. <laughs> and if they do, then that's more, more their issue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Melissa, you mentioned the five reasons. So are you saying that there's five reasons to, to do this or did I miss something? Well, I, I have a post about like, you know, five reasons why you should try this. Oh, nice. Like, you know, there's, there'll be no compromising on your trip. Um, you know, it'll, it'll increase your confidence. It will um, increase your awareness. Um, just, there's a couple more on there that, you know, we can get into mm -hmm. about just, just get out there and, and just doing it. Yeah. Have other, have other women written into you or even men written into you and said, you know, thank you. This is encouraged me to do something I never thought I could do. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback on Instagram for my nice. Instagram, the same, a single woman traveling. Um, I'm getting a lot of people telling me that they are inspired by, you know, what I've said. It has resonated with them and they do want to try it. So tell our listeners where they can find you on Instagram, because I love your Instagram feed. Melissa is going to a new exciting place all the time. And I'm so jealous when I'm in my office in Seattle that she's in Bordeaux or wherever she is on that day. <laughs> they can find me at a single woman traveling and okay. in Instagram. It's the same on Facebook. And then the URL is the a single woman traveling.com. That is fantastic. Yeah. What an inspiring story, Melissa. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So check out Melissa's website or her Instagram because she's got fantastic travel tips. One of them I was just looking at the other day was about how to fly first class on a budget. There's lots of helpful Ooh. tips there because when you're flying to Europe from Seattle, you do not want to sit, fly, and coach if you can avoid it. So all <laughs> kinds of little things that I would have never thought of that can help you make travel easier for you. And where is your next stop, Melissa? I'm going to Bari, Italy in September. Oh, fantastic. What is your dream? Where is one place that you are just dying to go to that you haven't been yet? Well, I'm really looking forward to going into Asia. I'm planning on that for January. So I'm really excited about Thailand and Singapore. Very nice. Yeah. Well, fantastic. So. Melissa, thank you so much for being here. We're going to take a quick break. Again, check out Melissa's blog, asinglewomantraveling.com, and you can get to Instagram and Facebook from there. Um, Laura, before we take a quick break, tell everyone how they can get in touch with you to do the same program that Melissa did and get out and see the world. Yeah, so you can go to richerhealing.com and schedule a complimentary consultation there or just give us a call at 206-765-8265. Fantastic. So when we come back to the Laura Richer Show, we'll be talking with another of Laura's former clients who left behind 25 years in corporate America to follow her passion of music, writing, and photography. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the Laura Richer Show. We are broadcasting here on Transformation Talk Radio. We are here with your host, dating and life coach, Laura Richer. Hi, Laura. Hi, Andy. Laura is the owner of Richer Healing Hypnosis, Reiki, and Coaching. And I am your co-host, Andy Lucas, and I am the owner of Hummingbird Marketing Services. So today we have been talking about letting go of our limiting beliefs and truly just going for it, following your dreams, your passions, whatever it is that you want to do. 
Um, our next guest is another of Laura's former clients, Nikki Lucas, and she also happens to be my sister. And I'm so happy to have her on the show today to share her story. Um, as I have shared many times, and earlier today, I started as a client of Nikki of Laura's, and I've had I had was having such great success that I encouraged Nikki to work with Laura. Um, and thanks to the wonders of video conferencing that we're embracing right now, Nikki, who lives in Northeast Ohio, uh, was still able to work with Laura despite being 2,500 miles away. So through her work with Laura, Nikki was able to let go of her limiting beliefs that a corporate job was the only way to make a living and started a blog, Adventure Music Life. Nikki, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Yay. So glad to have you, Nikki. So I think your story is so interesting. Let's just start by having you tell us a little bit about your background, college, the career you went into, and then up until the point when we started working together. Absolutely. Okay. So in college, you know, after high school, being 18 years old and having absolutely no idea what I wanted to go into, somebody said I was good at physics and math, so I should be an engineer. So I went to Case Western Reserve to study engineering. After two years, I realized this sucks. Sorry. Yeah, and, <laughs> that's um, okay. <laughs> transferred over to accounting, which also was no no better. But I, I wanted a solid business background because I always had, always had this fear that if I did what I really wanted to do, which was go to art school in Pittsburgh, that I wasn't going to make any money. And, you know, so this was the thing I should do. And so I was in corporate America for 20 some years doing auditing and um, operations management, account management, had a great time doing it sometimes, but it really wasn't <laughs> what I wanted to be doing. And I kept saying, I want to do something creative, but I just had no time to pursue anything. And then very long story short, in 2014, our company was totally changing everything. And I got kind of caught up in some layoffs. And lo and behold, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yes. Isn't it funny how that works out sometimes? Yes. Yeah. 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 So it was kind of a forced change. And then I had so many months to sit there and think about what I wanted to do. And that's what I got involved with you, Laura. Yes. So I do have to say that Andy, before she was a professional marketing consultant, she was an amateur marketing consultant. And she referred to me, everyone she knew, including her yes. sister. So yes. when this came up, even though Nikki was in Ohio, we got the chance to work together. And I very specifically remember a conversation that we were having where I, you know, you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do. This is what I've done for a long time. And I said, well, what do you love to do? And you started started telling me about how much you loved music and writing and how passionate you were about that. But then you're kind of like, but what am I going to do with that? Right. So what were some of the beliefs, even though you knew that you loved all of these things that were holding you back from pursuing something in that direction? So it just seemed absolutely impossible that I thought, what could I possibly do in the music business? And you know, I even went back in my mind a couple of years prior when I had gone to a concert and ended up meeting some of the band members afterwards. And although it was the greatest experience ever, I went into some little depression because I thought they're doing what they want to do. Mm. And how am I going to even possibly get involved in something like that? I have no, I'm not playing an instrument. I'm certainly not a singer. Andy can attest to that. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, you make it, a great backup singer. Thank you. Especially <laughs> when the mic is off. I'll tell you. Yeah, that's how I do it too. Mic off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, so it just seemed impossible like that, you know, what options could I have? Because, you know, being kind of funneled into corporate America for 20 years, mm. That's all I knew. I didn't, I couldn't even think beyond. It just, the act, you know, the possibilities were endless, but how could I even find out what those possibilities were? Yeah. So tell us a little bit how you got started. So it, thankfully, Laura, after talking to you, because then my, my, my dreams kind of went wild. I said, you know what? I'm going to write a novel. I'm going to write a movie <laughs> script. I'm going to do all these things. And you <laughs> said, wait a minute why don't you start with a blog first? Because I think we had <laughs> talked about that initially. And I thought, yeah. you know what, you're right. Let me just get started. And so I called it Adventure Music Life because I love traveling and taking adventures, but I love music. And I thought, you know, I really want to interview interesting people. And that's how it all started. Yeah. Because, you know, people with interesting lives, jobs, activities, interests, whatever. And I just started little by little meeting people 
and asking, would you mind if I interviewed you? Mm -hmm. And next thing I know, publicists were coming to me asking me, hey, could you interview this band? Wow. Promote this band. And it was, you know, it just kind of fell into place without me even realizing what was about to happen. Yeah. yeah. That is so amazing. And I love that you just started doing it. You didn't know publicists were going to start calling you. You didn't even right. know if you could yeah. get the press pass to, to get back in. You just went yes. for it and it happened. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, it was funny too, because when I started, I didn't even have a camera. I thought, you know, my iPhone, I bet I can take some good pictures on that and it'll <laughs> work. And then I quickly realized no. So I bought a camera. I started taking photography lessons, even though I'd been a photographer in the past, it, mm -hmm. everything had changed from film to digital. I'm aging myself. But, um, you know, so I, that's how I was able to kind of break in. Mm -hmm. Wow. It yeah. was so, Oh, go it, ahead, Andy. Sorry. I'm sorry. It was inspiring to me the time that we went to Paint in the Grass, which is a three-day festival that happens out here in near Seattle. And Nikki had a press pass and so got to go we got to interview people. I was just along for, I was her assistant, um, go along for that. Um, she got to go in where the photographers go, which is like leaning on the stage, taking pictures, interviewing these bands. I mean, it was, it was so cool. I felt like a rock star and I was just the, the writer's assistant, the photographer's assistant. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know what? That is the best part of it. It is so much fun. Mm -hmm. It's I'm, I'm having a blast doing it. And so that's been, you started your blog in 2015 and tell everyone yes. how they can get to it. It's adventuremusiclife.com. And you're on Instagram and Facebook and yes. Twitter and all of it. All of it. So then yeah. what I think is interesting is how this experience and starting this blog has led you into starting a company dragonfly yes. publicity mm -hmm. so yes. which is helping kind of musicians and bands and performers get going so tell us about that yes so over the years i was thinking you know and in talking to laura because we said what are gonna what are the next steps gonna be okay so this is the start this is the foundation what can this morph into and so yes i was working with andy on some marketing stuff and helping um like businesses. Mm -hmm. So how can we help bands act as businesses and promote them and market them in the same way? And so it just one thing kind of led to another and being introduced to several different bands and starting working with them and writing and doing press releases and taking pictures, showing up at concerts, doing whatever I have to do, whatever the job calls for, which is different every day. Mm -hmm. Um, just developing that and it just evolved it just really kind of happened on its own yeah and that's the most amazing part of it it just from one step it just tumbled into place yeah and did you we were talking about this earlier did you go into it with a plan knowing this is exactly how it's going to be step by step no, I could not have envisioned <laughs> from that very first day talking to Laura, I could never have envisioned that this is where it would have gone. Not, mm -hmm. not even one bit. Yeah. I, I really had no idea. I couldn't even see anything. So now it's just, and so I'll tell you what, it makes me excited for what's next. You know, what am yes. I still going to do? How am I still going to evolve and grow and yeah. all of that stuff? Yeah. So that is so fantastic. I mean, I just can't say that enough to people who are listening who want to get started in something they're passionate about. You're not going to know what's going to happen. You just, if you start on that journey and just let the kind of path unfold, you'll start to see it. But if you're waiting to have it all figured out before you start, it's not going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. And you know what? For me, it was just taking that first step. And yes, every step along the way has been scary. Mm -hmm. There have been times I've yeah. sat there and said, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. But it just, you know what, just do it. Just, yeah, just do it. And it, it's, it's been a blast. Yeah. Jennifer it's been hard Hyman. work too, but go ahead. Yes, sorry. always is. <laughs> Jennifer Hyman is the CEO and co-founder of Rent the Runway. And what she says is, if you're passionate about something, go for it. Because people are great at doing what they love and that's when they're happiest. And really, I would say that that's the truth, Nikki, just from seeing you, how much happy you are, happier you are. And you're kind yes. of in control of your own life. You were never really happy in corporate America. You never really wanted to be in accounting. You did always want to do something creative. And now you're doing it. It's really, really inspiring. And I'm, I'm 
I'm super proud of you. So I hope that listeners feel as inspired by you as I do and they break free of what they don't want to be doing so they can do what yes. they, their hearts truly desire and want. Yes. Yeah. You know what? If it can happen to me, it could happen to anyone because I never <laughs> thought this would be possible. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much, Nikki, for sharing your story. It's such a great and expi- inspiring story. And definitely check out Nikki's blog at adventurelifemusic.com when you get a chance. It's a fantastic blog. Not only does it talk about music and bands, but different lifestyle things, dinner parties. There's all kinds of great stuff on there. So check it out. Yeah. And so, thank you. Yeah. When thank we you. come back to the Laura Richer show, Laura and I are going to be talking more about following our passions and just going for it. And we are going to hear the story of how Laura Richer healing Seattle, healing all of it <laughs> came to be. So stay tuned. Well, welcome back to the Laura Richer Show, broadcasting here on Transformation Talk Radio. I am your co-host, Andy Lucas, and we are here with your illustrious host, dating and life coach, Laura Richer. Hello, Laura. Well, thank you for that introduction, Andy. Hello. very welcome. (laughs) Um, Today, we have been discussing how Laura has helped so many people, including me, let go of our limiting beliefs and embrace our passions which we've been able to turn into careers. And I think a story we'd all love to hear is how Laura did the same. And it's very inspiring. So Laura, tell us how Richer Healing, formerly known as Seattle Healing, came to be. So I like to share this story with my clients because I, like everyone else that we've talked to today, it just kind of came into being I won't say by accident, but I was born in my, I was born in my corporate job. I started exploring some new things that I was interested in, healing arts topics, no intention of creating a business or doing this at work. Just these were things that interested me. And then I had a point in my life where I just was very clear on what I didn't want to do anymore. I didn't want to work in corporate America anymore. I didn't want to live in Arizona anymore. And so I came back to Seattle and thought, well, I know what I don't want to be doing. So what am I going to do next? And I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I just thought, you know what? I'll just rent a little space and put out a Groupon and see if I can't get a client or two. So so that is how Seattle Healing was born. And from there, you know, I have made so many mistakes. I have learned so many things along the way. I have changed what I thought my business was going to look like a thousand different times. Um, And it's just grown and evolved into something that I actually didn't really imagine when I, I first started. Well, and that's one of my questions. Is what you created eight or nine years ago even remotely close to what you have today? Is it 100% different? Is it, are there similarities? Has there always been kind of a common thread? So yes. So the the foundation of it is that I love working with clients. I love supporting other people, whether it's in finding the right relationship or finding the right career path or accomplishing goals. And so that was the foundation of the business from the very beginning. And that has always remained true. I love working with clients and Mm -hmm. helping them see all the possibilities that are available to them. But the way that I've gone about doing that has evolved over the years. And even more, um, I've been in school, I'm finishing up my master's degree in counseling. So I've learned a lot as a clinician and and have developed my skills over the last eight or nine years um, in doing therapy and and other types of healing arts. so that part has been evolving. Um, but I think what has changed the most, what is totally different than what I started is how I run my business yes. and what I've learned about business. And so that's the part that I could have never anticipated. I, I had a natural skill for working with other people in a therapeutic setting. What I didn't know anything about was how to run a business. And that is what has grown and evolved quite a bit over the years. It is very inspiring to watch you because I have, I mean, I've known you for five, four or five years at this mm-hmm. point, And I really have, and I, it's been fun being a part of it too and helping with marketing and everything, but it really is inspiring how you are always able to see kind of this bigger picture and know 
kind of where you're heading and you're not afraid of making changes. It, is that correct? Are you not afraid of making changes? Is it that you want to make changes? Yes, I always want to make changes, which sometimes is to my detriment. I'm always thinking of the new thing and wanting to try something different. And that's not always the best thing to do either. Sometimes you have to give things a little bit of time. But even now, my business is getting ready to go through a big change again and a name change, which <laughs> it's not good for my web presence. Um, but I, like I mentioned, I'm going to be finishing my master's degree in clinical mental mm -hmm. health counseling. I'll be done in December and then I will be able to see clients um, for counseling. And so that has really shifted the vision that I have. And I'm going to be growing my practice. My goal is to have a group practice and bring other clinicians into my business, which is not actually something I had really ever thought that I yeah. wanted to do. Yeah. But the more I've worked and the more I've seen how other businesses have grown and thrived, it's just something that has come to me now. So, and I'm sure the vision that I have for the group practice right now will continue to grow and, yeah. and evolve. Yeah. I think what's an interesting kind of differentiator for you is that it's you will have the master's in counseling and it's a counseling practice, but you also incorporate all of your life coaching skills and hypnotherapy into mm -hmm. it, which is really, I feel like getting such a more well-rounded um, treatment, I guess. It's a more holistic treatment. I think so too. And I, you know, hypnotherapy has for me been such an amazing modality to work with and seeing how it helps clients. And I actually had my own hypnotherapy session last week um, nice. with a friend of mine who is a hypnotherapist. And I had an amazing session. I was having a lot of stress and anxiety. After one session of hypnotherapy, I just left feeling light and oh. fantastic. So thank you, Denise, if you're listening to this. Um, <laughs> and I am going to continue to incorporate that in my business. So as I yeah. bring practitioners into my business, they will all also be hypnotherapists because I just, I think that that is a modality that's been considered kind of woo woo and it's too bad for the people who aren't necessarily into that kind of a thing because it is such an effective therapeutic intervention I mean, and a fast acting one too. Yes. You don't do hypnotherapy for every week for a year. You do it four to six sessions and you're going to feel vastly different. So yes. I absolutely will keep that as part of my business. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it has helped me so much. So let me ask you this. What advice would you give to a woman who's listening, who's in her thirties and forties and thinking about starting a business? And is that advice different if you were talking to someone in her twenties or even her fifties? Um, I, I don't know. I think the, the advice is the same. You know, there are the practical things that you have to look at in terms of what works for your finances and your family. And, you know, I, when I started my business, I had to, to sacrifice. I had to downsize mm -hmm. quite a bit. There were things that I had to do to be able to make that happen. But if those are all things that you're ready to do and you really want to follow that vision, whether you're in your 20s or in your 50s, you know, the time is now. For whatever reason, you've come to a place where this is something that you're really ready to do. So mm -hmm. I think the advice would pretty much be the same. Obviously, you're at a different point in your life in your 20s than you are in your 50s. So the way you might go about it might be be different. Mm -hmm. um, but I but I think the advice would be pretty much the same. There's always a way. You wouldn't feel drawn to something if it wasn't for you. So there's always a way to make it happen. It's just about peeling away the fears and, yeah. and the things that are getting in the way. Harriet Tubman once said, if you're, every great dream begins with a dreamer. And always remember you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars and change the world. Yeah. And that's what you're doing. Oh, well, thank you, Andy. One person at a time. <laughs> I mean, look at that. You it know, really I'm, is cool. And age comes up to be such a big thing. Louise Hay started Hay's How Hay House Publishing in her late 50s. Wow. Um, there have been people who have started amazing companies. I can't start, think of somebody in my mind in their 20s, tech companies mm -hmm. that have been fantastic. Yeah. So the age should not be a factor. Ever. Yeah. And you, I think some people get held down by limiting beliefs like, well, I have kids. I, I can't do that. Yeah. Or, well, I have a house payment. I can't do that. But you, but you can't. You can't. So, you just got to figure out what the answer is. So that's what we yes. do. So believe it or not, we are out of time. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Goes it goes so quick. I know. So before we go, Laura, please remind everyone how they can get in touch with you and you can help them 
change their lives and get in a direction that they want to be going. So you can find me at richerhealing.com. You can schedule your complimentary consultation there. We can chat and see if my services are a good fit to help you. You can just give us a call at 206-765-8265. And also, if you are there, there are more things that you want to hear about learning or starting your own business or finding the right relationship. We have a whole archive of shows of the Laura Richer Show at lauraricherradio.com. Fantastic. So thank you again for tuning in. Thank you, Laura, for having me here. I love doing thank this you, show. Thank you, Andy. Yes. And thanks for tuning in to the Laura Richer Show here on Transformation Talk Radio. And we'll talk to you next month. You've been listening to On The Verge Radio, using your breakdown for a breakthrough with Coach Laura Richer. We all have that moment in life when we are on the verge of big change. This time of transition is a wild and unknown place. How will you show up? Embrace the positive, drop the negative, and you can experience total transformation. Schedule a breakthrough session with Laura at seattlehealinghypnosis.com. Laura will help you discover the path to creating rapid and positive changes. Tune in every month for On The Verge Radio with Laura Richer.